Welcome back to the channel guys. Uh, while we're behind this slow moving tractor, let me introduce the video. Today we're going to talk about three things that will make your next motorcycle camping trip that much better. Three mistakes that I made in our recent 18 day cross Europe camping trip. So stick around at the end of the video. I promise the town that we're going to ride through is absolutely gorgeous. So stick around at the end of the video and check that out. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and let's get started. Okay, so it's mistake number one. The, the first mistake we made, and I think maybe the biggest mistake, was too many miles. Altogether, I think it ended up being uh, right around 3,000 miles which over 18 days isn't uh, isn't that bad, I don't think. However, if I had had it my way, it would have been probably twice that many miles. Luckily, some sense at least was talked into me, uh, but I still, I still should have shortened it. And here's why. I have the problem of putting too many miles or of, of judging the success of the, uh, of the adventure by the number of miles that I ride. And what that leads to is just constantly being on the bike uh, all day every single day and we're going to get into route planning here in a minute but for me it ends up being you know five or six hours on the highway just banging out miles trying to get to the next destination and it's because i want to see as much as i can possibly see during my free time uh, we don't have enough of it and uh and so it's important to me that i spend every bit of it seeing as much as i can the problem is in an effort to see more you're actually seeing less because you can't see much from from the interstate or from the highway or in this case the autobahn and so that's mistake number one my recommendation is uh, that you balance that try to try to pick locations um, maybe two or three hours apart so that that uh, you're spending less time on the bike and more time in the destination that's of course if you're in a place where the destination is is uh is key and, and right now we are mistake number two we rode two up across like six countries and uh as much as i love to spend every second with my wife having her on the back of the bike was not good for her and it was definitely uh, not good for me. It caused several problems. Number one, it's hard to take into account the comfort of the passenger. There's only so much you can do. There's just a seat back there with a backrest and and that's about it. She's not the type of person that sits back there and like is on her phone the whole time. So she's really just kind of along for the ride. This, the second problem with that is with riding two up for such a long distance is space uh, you don't have enough space for two people's worth of stuff for 18 days which means you're going to spend a good portion of your time doing things like laundry 18 days worth of clothes fills up a saddlebag pretty quick but it was supposed to be a motorcycle camping trip that meant that we lost a saddlebag the tour pack uh, which we have a chop tour pack so it's not a full-size tour pack but we lost a saddlebag the tour pack and uh, the top of the saddlebag all to camping gear because we wanted to be comfortable at the campsite and we we were for the most part however uh, again that cut into how much space the two of us got to use for our personal things and so that meant more laundry that meant uh, more eating out we weren't able to carry food or the type of camping gear like uh, jet boils and things like that that we would normally take I'll reiterate that's a pretty cool building. I would reiterate that I would not do two up again for such a long period of time over so many miles and I especially uh, wouldn't do it if we're camping. If you watched my review of the Lone Rider tent, which is a good tent, I didn't have anything negative to say about the tent, but if you watch that review I talk about how much space that tent cost us and the fact that we were two up on the bike is really the issue. Okay so number one, too many miles. Number two, too many people on the bike. <laughs> All right, the third thing that I think we did wrong on this recent trip was our route planning. Again, this is my fault. I think all of this is actually my fault. I was pretty much responsible for all of it. 
and I'm the one that screwed it up. So because I wanted to travel so many miles to get to so many different destinations, again, when I first planned this, we were supposed to go to a different destination every single night, which didn't happen. Uh, but that was my original plan. And if it was just me on the bike, that's probably how it would have gone down. With all those miles uh, between between sites, the only way to get there was on the highway. Uh, if, if I had tried to take country roads like this one, which are fun to ride on and are beautiful, it would have been uh, you know double or triple the time to get from point A to point B every day. What that meant was more time on the highway. And it kind of goes back to point number one. In an effort to see more, I actually saw a lot less. And I regret that. I saw less because I'm on a highway the whole time. The only thing I'm seeing is gas stations uh, and whatever you can see from the highway, which generally isn't much. Although the Alps, the highway in the Alps was still very beautiful. Some of that footage is in one of the other videos that I'll link below. Uh, and coming through the Pyrenees from Barcelona to San Sebastian, uh, also very beautiful. And again, that footage will be in that video. But for the most part, being on the highway is not where you want to be. You want to be on backcountry roads. You want to be in scenery like this. And and that's hard to do when you're just planning on so many miles between point A and point B. Route, route planning really becomes as, as simple as uh, typing in the address in the Waze or Apple Maps and hitting go. And that's not the way you should ride a motorcycle. Uh, so it wasn't until, until towards the end of the trip, after we had changed our plans, like we cut out cities, we completely changed our plans. And it wasn't until we did that that we were able to focus on the route instead of just getting to where we were headed. And so the way to do this from the beginning is when you're, when you're selecting cities, the way I normally plan a route would be if, uh, if I was going to uh, Barcelona from here, I would type in Barcelona, I'd hit go, and then I'd look for stuff that I want to see along the way. And I would try to e evenly space those out based on how many hours I thought we could ride every day. Right, so that's the way that you should plan, plan your route. However, you have to go into your settings and click that avoid highways uh, button. And avoid all the uh, as much of the highway as possible. That's going to give you a vastly different number for hours traveled, right? So, wow, look at this guy. That was nice. That's going to give you a, a you know, it's obviously going to take you a lot longer to get from point A to point B. That's going to cut down on this the distance that you can ride. But it's going to give you a much better route, much more scenic route, much more beautiful route uh, to get to get where you're going. And if you can't go as far, I, I think that that's okay. So those are the three big mistakes that we made during our recent trip that hopefully you can avoid. Again, the first one, too many miles. Too many miles and, and hours in the saddle uh, every day. Uh, number two, uh, riding two up for that many days in a row while trying to do a motorcycle camping trip kind of connected there and then the last one when you do decide how far you're going to go how many miles you're going to go the route that you take to get there is hugely important to whether or not you enjoy uh, the overall trip here's a pro tip anytime you come into a new town and you want to find the, the center of the town which is always the old the old part of the town first thing you do is always look for the, the church steeple you'll always be able to see it you can see that one over there that's another town You'll always be able to see it from a distance. Drive towards the church steeple and you'll always find the old part of the town. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, I promise you that this video would end with uh, an absolutely beautiful town. This is a town named Chemnitz. Uh, it's in Bavaria. And it is really gorgeous. It's obviously the old part of town. You see the cobblestone. But well, that's pretty cool. You get to do stuff like this in Europe. You don't see a lot of that in the US.
of the best ways to uh, to end the evening is to get on the bike and find a random town and just explore a little bit. And maybe get ice cream. I guess that's what I should be doing. All right, guys, hope you liked the video. Uh, before you get out of here, please hit that subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up. If there's something else you want to see, hit the, the comments down below and let me know. Until next time, please keep the rubber side down.